Yeah. Can you hit record on Broccoli and cheddar. Broccoli and cheddar? Yeah. Nah, you know where the best broccoli and cheddar is? Panera. Panera. Yeah, he knows what he's talking about. I used to work at Panera. That's all I used to eat. I couldn't. Fucking I couldn't work at a. I couldn't work at a food place. I'd get fucking so fat, bro. That's what I told myself. But I'm, I'm to, still, still skinny as hell. I used to ask for like chicken in it. They look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, you want chicken and broccoli and cheddar? Like, yeah, that makes it better. Y'all just throw all that yeah, shit together, bro. Chicken, it's, what? chicken makes everything better. Every chicken yeah. makes, you know what I hate when people tell. When people are like, oh, it tastes like chicken. Like, bro, nothing tastes like chicken. Yeah, well, chicken, chicken tastes, tastes like, like chicken. chicken. See, this I can, <laughs> no, I can, I can honestly like tell you sometimes, like, you ever had rabbit? No. Okay. Rabbit tastes like rabbit. I've had rabbit. Rabbit, <laughs> rabbit tastes like rabbit. To me, like, it, I've never had rabbit. So, like, first time I had rabbit, they didn't, my parents didn't tell me it was rabbit. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, so, like, I chicken? ate it. I was like, hey, what'd you think? It was great. Fucking little little crispier this time. You know uh-huh. what I mean? And they're like, yeah, because it's rabbit. Because like, <laughs> <"What?" laughs> did you feel oh, bad I after eating it? You just saw nah, that cute face. No, he was like, I'm just like, hey, rabbit, rabbit. Rabbit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know my grind just to live it out. Say what's on your mind just to hear it loud. Everybody knows me, really, that's the old me. Going through some changes right here and now. All right, and we are live with another episode of the Dope Individuals Only Podcast. I'm Eric, the host. This is my guest, Patrick Palmer. Please introduce yourself. I am Patrick Palmer. I am, oh man, I'm going to introduce myself. Jack of all trades, I guess. Jack of all fucking trades. I, uh, I'm a school board director. Um, I've been having programs throughout our city. I've lived here for 20-something years in the heart of downtown Allentown. Yeah, you live um, you live right in the smack middle of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right next to Park Street. Right. <laughs> um, Six and Allen, where uh, a lot of interesting things have happened over the years. Um, I mean, it's been, it's. I would say it's helped me be who I am. One of the best things is I can understand Spanish because of where I live. Ah, uh, do you speak it? I, I, I can't, I can't. Yeah. Cause like when I try, it t- comes out terribly. It, can, it comes out so bad. But uh, like, if you ask me something, I can answer and, you in English. Yeah, you can understand what they say. That's I, I'm really afraid to talk Spanish too, cause it sounds like shit. Yeah, it's, that's why. I've been actively. Well, no, nah, I should say actively. I'd be lying to you. I've been trying to learn Spanish, but okay. it's it's such a complicated language. It, like at least in my opinion, people say it's the easier. It's easy, one of the easiest languages to learn, but. Uh-uh. And it's and it's intimidating as shit to go out there and try to have a conversation with somebody, like, like that speaks fluent Spanish. I, like I find it really intimidating. I don't. I, so yesterday I was at a, a baby shower, and they it was a Dominican baby shower, and they were talking back and forth. They could party. And yeah, it was basically a party. Yeah, it was a party. <laughs> it's a party. Yeah. And like I was keeping up in the conversation, and she was like, "I didn't know you were Dominican. You look black." And I was like, "I am black." I am like. <laughs> And so what? are Dominicans. Yeah, so <laughs> so are Dominicans. And she was just like, but you you speak Spanish? And then she was like talking to me, and she was like, but you're not answering in Spanish. And I'm like, because I don't speak it. I, I can't. I just understand and, it. Yeah, she was like, oh, okay. You, okay. you think you slick. That's just so nobody's talking shit about you <laughs> yeah, around here. Yeah, yeah. That's how you learn, though, when you're a kid. You're like, are you talking about? Yeah, I don't know. So I gotta like, you gotta try to figure it out. To this day, I like, I hate when I'm talking and then somebody starts talking in Spanish. I'll be like, y'all talking shit, ain't you? So That's there's like, some <laughs> words you can pick up on uh, and be like, no, they talking. They about talk me. about me. Yeah, like, talk about you me. start hearing conios in there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's about me. Yeah. I know that's me. <laughs> oh shit, uh, that that's interesting though. I, I would have never guessed that that you can at least interpret what they're what they're talking about. I didn't know that. That's pretty impressive. Um, and your area definitely has chilled out. I remember there was a time where my mom wouldn't even let me close past Hoppo because we used to live really? on Seventh, yeah, Seventh and uh, Lumber, which is like two and a half blocks up, and I wasn't allowed to go past uh, go past Hoppo, which is a Chinese spot for y'all who don't know. Um, they had some really good Chinese food back in the day. They, they did. They I, did. I don't know and what I, happened, man. There's a quality, like, there's a food quality drop off. I used to love their French fries. They had the best French fries in America. You ever had their French fries? I had. I used to have that and the the, uh, the chicken wings. Yeah, yeah the fr- good to go. Yo, they used to give you a dollar, a dollar. The fries used to be like this. Now they use like crinkle cut. I'm like, nah, that's some bullshit. It, bro. I think the management changed over there, the ownership or something. Um, but that, I mean, it's. I can't believe she wouldn't let you pass up, <laughs> bro. I mean, it's Park Street was dangerous. This is when this is when people yeah. were, were dying on a weekly basis yeah. in this park, 
like like that was when the gang was active. You know what I mean? So my mom's like, bullets don't got names on them. You know what I mean? Yeah, that that's was, true. That was kind of like her mindset of it. I mean, there was times where I started to get a little bit older and that rule was still implemented. And I'm like, man, I'm not bothering nobody. I, so I'm, I mean, it worked out, but I get I get like the precaution because that shit was crazy over there for a while. So it was, um, I had a, a cousin. He was uh, he was shot in his car. Um, his name is Joey. Okay. I'm sh I think you might have. I know Jeannie knows him. Joe um, Blow is he in the wheelchair now? No, no. He, okay. he, he was killed. He, oh. that, that's what happened. Uh, bots. Joey yeah. Bots. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. I yeah. was with his son. Shout out to Tajay and his mom. Um, they were running, they're helping run the fucking KNT basketball tournament down at Cedar Beach um, for somebody who ended up committing suicide. But yeah, back to yeah. your story. But no, he was shot by somebody who knew him. And um, I, I know him too. Yeah. He's like an uncle, which is, it's so, it's such a fucked up story. And it was like, he, he used to wait outside for me and my sister because he was on Park Street. So mm -hmm. he used to wait outside for me and my sister and he would talk to us every day, just make sure we were okay, make sure we were getting home fine. And it would be like, well, I don't know why, because I was a kid, I was talking smack all the time. I was like, I don't need you out here. I don't need you out here at all. And then it was just like, the one day he wasn't there, and then I, we had to find out, like, yo, he's not outside. No, he's never going to be outside no more. Like, it was it was kind of crazy, because it's like, the way you're talking about it, where it does, like, Park Street, it's bad. Even when you're just minding your own business, like, somebody will just come up and just act like they're your friend and just... They shoot you in the street. It, yeah, it's, just... it, it's a it's it, it runs by a total different set of guidelines, and motherfuckers think they safe even around people that they know their entire lives. And like you said, he ended up being murdered by somebody that he grew up with. Yeah, and was... and the craziest part is I'm not sure if you know, but like it resulted from something that happened when the one dude was in prison. Yeah, yeah. It's like you know they're bringing they're bringing prison issues out into the regular world. And they're continuing whatever whatever beef is going on outside of the, the confines of the prison system. So it's yeah. it's it's a real fucked up situation. Did you know his son? Yeah. Yeah, you know Tajay? Big shout out yeah. to Tajay. That's what's up. I okay. mean, pull, pull the mic a little bit down so I can I can see. The whole stand? Just pull a little oh, bit, not to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Right there. My bad. Oh. <clears throat> Um, so I, I didn't know, I didn't, it's such a small world. It's such a small world. Cause yeah. I see, I see his son and his mom, uh, and well, his baby mother. I see them like once a year, which is crazy. Cause we live in the same city, <laughs> but I see them once a year. And it's always at this basketball tournament where it's like this basketball tournament is like a reunion. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool. Um, having the opportunity, seeing people in like at, at something that is a, a positive thing now. Um, even though somebody's life was, was taken to even create it but you know what came out of it is something beautiful which is like people get an opportunity to run into people they haven't seen in years you know what i mean i ran into yesterday i ran into like i want to say maybe like six people i haven't seen since middle school you know what i mean like and it's yeah. like everybody's out there i see all my friends like i got three kids so i see them out there they got baby strapped to their chest <laughs> or they're pushing strollers and i'm laughing at them because i'm out there with my eight-year-old son i was like oh you guys are st oh yeah you started way too late <laughs> That's the one thing I'm grateful for is like, you know, at a time where it's like, I'm almost out of my 20s, all my kids, like, for the most part, they're self-sufficient. So, which is pretty cool. You want kids at any point? I know you yeah. ain't got none. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> we, we, we trying to have some kids. Nah. Um, Cause I don't want to get too old. Your life's about to be over. Yeah, I don't nah. want to get too old though <laughs> and be like, oh man, like going to a graduation and I'm 60. I don't want to be doing that. Like that's, I think that's too much. It looks it's weird like, too sometimes. Yeah, like, oh, this is my dad. And he's yeah, like, like all light. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah be like, oh, I thought that was your grandpa. I thought, like, yeah. Oh no, yeah. like, he's a late bloomer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that's, but that's I mean, up. I. So yeah, I want to have some kids because I and part of it is like I I want to be able to keep up with the family, mm -hmm. and so we get together sometimes, and it's but it's been like way too long since COVID, mm -hmm. and before COVID it was like yeah you'd see your family a lot, and now it's just kind of like. Everybody fell off. They're kind of doing their own thing. And I mean, when you bring life into the world, people come to celebrate it. And unfortunately, when life leaves this world, people get together to celebrate it. I want there to be that nice in between again, where it's like, you're just getting together to celebrate. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you said, like, you, you know, something good comes from something bad. And it, it shouldn't be like that. Like, it shouldn't be waiting for a bad thing to happen for us to, for us to get together. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel that way. I feel like the only time I really get to see like all of my family. And like I said, we all live really close. Like the furthest person in my family probably lives in like New Jersey. Like 
We're talking about like East Orange, New Jersey. So that's an hour, hour and a half away. You know what I mean? But the only time we see each other is funerals or like if we're lucky, Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? And it's like we got an opportunity right here, right now to, to make something happen. And nobody's taking no initiative to get together. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I realized it the most when my grandparents died. Because I lost both my grandparents within like an eight month span. Like my grandmother oh, went yeah. and then my grandfather died a couple months later. And I will be honest, the moment that happened, everybody just like kind of scattered into corners. And then now you're lucky if you see everybody, you know, once a year. And that's how it happens. Like you got the matriarch and the patriarchs of the family. That's what keeps people together. And yeah. you don't realize it till it's gone. And you're like, oh man, now nobody's really getting together. Like our family used to every two weeks, we would have like some kind of cookout. People would bring something. Yeah. And even if it's cold out, everybody just chill inside. Like that's what our family did. There'd be kids in the basement playing video games and adults upstairs. The nostalgia. And talking smack. And yeah. But that's what we did every two weeks, and that was something that we grew up on, and then it just stopped. Where 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 do you find yourself? Like, do you find yourself trying to be the person that is kind of carrying the torch? Because at some point, somebody has to do it. If nobody does it, it's not going to be done, and everybody's just we're just going to keep seeing each other at funerals. Do you find yourself trying to coordinate and put these things together? I so I don't think, and this might be like old school thing. I don't think I'm old enough i guess i would say to be the person to do that <laughs> like it might be old school thinking where it's like no you have to be the person because age and wisdom come together yeah. regardless it does and you got to be that person who's like because i don't even know everybody i'm not gonna lie i don't know how to because like there were people you'd see like people got like, a lot of cousins yeah yeah but I, I don't know that person's number like and and some of my family it's funny because even my cousin, who she would like babysit us, she would help raise us. Mm -hmm. uh, it was um, Joey's sister, okay, uh, Nikki. So she would like help us, and she didn't even know my name. It'd be like that. Yeah, it was. It's just it too was, many people. Because like, I got I got a phone call one day, and I was like, I think it was like fourteen, and they called the house, and they were like, "There's no Patrick here," and I was like, "What?" And my aunt was like, "What?" And she was like, "Yeah, somebody's calling for a Patrick," and she was like. That's him. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> Me, like, I'm Patrick. She's like, your name's Patrick? Like, <laughs> and I'm like, who, wait, have, I, who what? have I been chilling with yeah. all this time? And it's, but it's like that. Like, yeah. you, I got family, and um, my one cousin, like, we grew up, and we always called him TK. Mm. That was it, TK. And then one day, I was in school with them, and they somebody called him Harry. <laughs> and I was like, who the fuck is Harry? Harry? Who's <laughs> Harry? And they were like, your cousin because they knew we were cousins it was like your cousin i was like he was like yeah that's my name and i was like oh what I, I have a similar story i have a cousin named darius and i called him darius his entire life and i remember one day he pissed off his mom and she's like philip get your ass down here now i'm like who the fuck are you talking to yeah. i'm like who's philip she's like darius i'm like darius is philip i'm like like who is this guy? yeah <laughs> It's that, it's, it looks like that fucking Spider-Man photo everybody just <laughs> yeah, pointed at each other. Like, like, what? Yeah. And so, but for me, it's like, if I look some people up on Facebook, I wouldn't be able to find them. I guess that's simple, because I don't know what your real name is. <laughs> but it's not that I don't know you, I just don't <laughs> know, because, like, so, I'm you Jamaican. Never, you never really ask. Yeah, yeah. And, like, Jamaicans, they all have nicknames, and it's crazy, because, like, you'll never know what somebody's name is. <laughs> And it's like, this is a person you grew up with. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, I did not know. I Listen, I, I feel I bask in that pain because, and I'd be embarrassed to ask people too. Like, like yesterday, I probably dapped up like three people. I did not remember their names. I don't forget faces, <laughs> but I, yo, and it's so embarrassing to be like, damn, yo, I remember you from my childhood, but I do not remember what your name is. Like, I feel like that would be I'm better. I'm sorry, DeAndre, I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that would be better than just, not knowing this person's real name your whole life. And it's like, I can't go it's, my whole life and not, not know somebody's real, real name. name. Especially like, oh. if like you, you, go, you go through it with these people. You know what yeah. I mean? They're, they're an intricate part of your existence. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, also, you're not old enough. I mean, I mean you are old enough to, to kind of oh. carry the torch. But I think you're gonna have to be like, yo, I don't really know these people, so I need you to, <laughs> I need you to invite them, but this is the invitation, like, you know what I mean? Because I realized like, I wanted those things when my grandparents died and nobody was willing to do it. So now like I have to be the, well, I took it upon myself to be that person, I should say, like to kind of 
get people together like yo i'm cooking dinner tonight you know i hope you guys can get over here and make it I'm, you know i'm have enough for everybody and and it feels good in those moments especially when it's not like after a somber moment or it's a holiday where we all should be together yeah. you know what i mean so yes you 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 my good sir are <laughs> old, old enough, enough. <laughs> I'm old enough. Like, <laughs> take your take it from the guy who's younger. I got cousins that are older than me. It's like that. That's probably that, on you. That's that not your should, job. That should be you. Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, I don't think I. Get, yeah, that's on you. I, I really appreciate like now that I'm older. Like you said, you you kind of take those moments for granted when you're a kid because it's just like, oh, I see my cousins all the time. Oh, I see my. Gr-. But then when they when people start trickling off, it's like, oh shit! Like, yeah, you really gotta appreciate these moments. Is there is there something that you do like now to kind of live in the moment? Cause it it I get it. Life is life gets complicated. We all got real life issues to worry about. But how do you make sure that you're living in the moment when you probably should be living in those moments? So like, what, what do you mean? All right. So a great example. Before we turn on the, you were talking about how people how you don't have a TikTok or anything because people just scroll and you used to find yourself just scrolling. Like, yeah. what the fuck am I doing here? So now like you have some self-awareness so like what are you doing now like to make sure like when you're around like your cousin or your brother like how are you making sure that you're really really there because you know it might not always be enjoyable people might not have a a conversation you want to be part of but like you still got to enjoy those moments i i mean i bring myself into the conversation Mm -hmm. a lot of times i'll put my phone away and i'll just bring myself into the conversation because like you stash it yeah i put my phone in my pocket like i don't so even yesterday, I, my phone was in my pocket, like, and I'm just talking to people. I'm just, and I'm talking to people I don't know because I didn't know his wife, like I didn't know her at all. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking to her family, just kind of joking around, just having fun, because it's like that's always been me. Like I've always been the person I could just kind of joke around with people, have some fun, and I mean, I no matter what the conversation is, and sometimes I'll just join the opposite side of the argument if they're having an argument, just like, because trying to piss the people off, yeah. Just, <laughs> Just because, just to like, and so, but that's because, like, I will, I wouldn't say, like, I'm the smartest person in the world at all, but I would look up things just to be sure, and, like, you know, it's better to know a little bit about a lot than a lot about a little. Yeah. So you can always be part of a conversation. You can always join in, and you can always have a good time, or you can use that to learn. There's been so many times where I could just fake my way through a conversation, but I'm learning from the other person I'm talking to. Yeah, in the the heat of the moment. Yeah, so (laughs) I'll just... I'll just be personable and kind of just enjoy the moment. Like if I'm out with somebody or something like that, like I'm not in my phone or anything like that. Um, I mean, I'm just I'm just being me. I'm just. Do, do you still enjoy? Do you still enjoy talking to people? I know as people get older, they're they're less susceptible to bullshit. I think that's one of the things that comes with age and wisdom. You just realize like, all right, this this isn't a circle I necessarily want to be in. So. Shit, I forgot my conversation. What was my train of thought? So you were talking about how as you was getting older, you uh, you tend to let, be less social. Oh yeah. So like like, are you still as as willing to be involved in conversations the older you get, or do you find yourself being a little bit more standoffish in particular about what conversations you want to be a part of? I'll. The older I get, I would say the more I want to be able to be in a conversation. Okay. Um, because if I'm talking to someone who let's just say that there's a, two people that are younger than me. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to be a part of that conversation because I can either teach them something or I can learn something from them. Ah. So I always want to be a part of a conversation just to, just because it's like you learn something from that or you give them some kind of knowledge when right. you're having that conversation. So I, for me, when I get older, like I always say, I'll be that old guy who will just be sitting there with his pants up to here telling stories <laughs> to the kids. Not the but, overall? Yeah, yeah, up to here telling <laughs> stories to the kids. And just like have a dog with me, and everybody's like, "Oh, old man Palmer's talking oh, to everybody." Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, but that's me though. That's always been me. That's and funny I that you like, have that image of yourself. Yeah, I'll be that guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's fine. I know that I would enjoy it, and that's why, like, even now I do what I do because, at the end of the day, like I enjoy it, mm-hmm. and I'm not gonna take something away from myself that I enjoy. At the same time, I'm helping people. Mm-hmm. So, and they say like, you're not working if you're doing what you love. That's why I do this because I love doing this. Like I even on Tuesday we're having like a back to school bash. I'm sure you heard about that on Tuesday that we're no, having. No, I didn't hear about that. Oh, so we're having a back to school bash on Tuesday. Okay. I'm I'm seeing the thing. I'm gonna be out there with the kids, just joking uh, around, uh, having fun because I love doing that. So right. for me, that's not even work. For me, that's just going out, having a good time, 
And at the same time, you know, we're helping people. Being around a bunch of kids, you're going to have a whole bunch of fun being around a bunch of kids. Yeah. Kid, kids are fucking, they're crazy. They're crazy. Yeah. They know how to have fun at it and make a game out of <laughs> anything, bro. Kids are so fucking creative. But for me, I'm wondering, like, when did adults lose that? Because at some point you were a kid and you could just have fun doing this stuff. And yeah, I get it. Like, life happens. You turn into an adult. But you don't need to lose the simple things that you enjoy in life. Like, And that's where it kind of... Oh. Yeah, that's where it kind of like gets me where it's like these people like there's people that just they live life without having any kind of joy in it yeah. yeah there's no joy for you <clears throat> and i understand you can work and work and work and work but you got to be able to have some kind of fun in life or else what's the end game here what's the goal that, like, what are you doing that's a fact is there anything that you do now like like that that you still get like that little boy joy from like for me i get to play video games i get to go play basketball shit like that like those are the things that I love to do as a child that like I brought into adulthood where it's like, this shit is non-negotiable. Like this is what brings me joy. This is what I'm going to be doing until I'm unable to do it. Is there anything that you have in your life that's like, you know what I mean? Other than like conversation, you know what I'm saying? Things that you like to do as a child. Yeah, I, can, I still play video games when I get the chance and I'm nowhere near as good as I used to be. <laughs> like I'll be that guy in the party that's like terrible sometimes, but I still do it because I get the joy out of it. Yeah. It's fun. And then I can, nothing happened. I didn't hurt anybody. Nobody was, nobody hurt me. And then I put it down. I go back upstairs and I'm just relaxed. Why, why do you think women hate that grown men play video games? Oh, <laughs> I, I, I think the narrative has changed a little bit I more think, recently. But I mean, yeah, I, I've seen absolutely. more gamer, female gamers than ever before. But like, there's times my wife come downstairs and I'm like, I've been waiting all day to get on this motherfucker. <laughs> I think it's... And so I've had a conversation before and the way it was put to me is because when you're home, you're supposed to be spending time with me. And, and so even like ties, I have, I have like my setup, but then behind me, there's like a couch and a chair. Okay. So you can come and just chill on the couch because sometimes even when we're spending time and I don't think they realize when we're spending time with them, they, a lot of times they'll be on their phone anyway. Yeah. And it's like, well, why can't I be, yeah, why can't I play video? a game yeah, while yeah. you're on? So we're still spending time together. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not staring at you. Yeah, the we're, whole time. we're sharing the same space. Yeah, I don't think that's enough for them. I don't think I, that's I enough. Don't, <laughs> and I can't understand why because I mean, how many times have you looked over and your wife is just on her phone? Or, yo, she did that shit last night. I purposely left my phone downstairs. I pulled to you. And I'm just like, you know, I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to watch a Little Mermaid with them. I'm going to come kick with the fit. And we sitting here at the table, we eating before we turn the movie on. We're just like, 40 minutes she just like scrolling now and now she's she's like looking up something that she's interested in. she wants to like make soap like she wants to learn how to make all natural soap but i'm, I'm like i'm sitting here at the dinner table which i ne i only typically ever eat like on the move or at in front of a tv that's typically how i am and yeah i'm sitting here at the damn dinner table with you eating and no phone like why are you on your phone you gotta have a no phone rule at the table. I think so because I don't even sit at the table. So like for me to be up here, it's like fucking like a miracle just happened. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat at the table. I had to do that shit as a kid, and I couldn't stand it. So like now as an adult, I'm like fuck the rules. <laughs> <laughs> but it works though. So like then you guys can start having conversations again, and then you go. It gets back into this is great bonding time. Like, yeah, this just, this is intimacy. Yeah. I don't eat at the dinner table every day, but when we do, we put our phone away. We we can talk. We say, you know, "How was your day?" Anything? I know all about her job, and I know all about the people that she works with. I don't care about any of these people, yeah. but I know all about them. I've never seen them before in my <laughs> life, but I can tell you what her boss yeah, Eric was doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know all about them. I've never seen them before, but I know all about them. They got a whole laundry list of complaints. <laughs> yeah. I can tell that. I'm like, yo, I think honestly, I think I'm going to have to start putting her on a timer. Like, look, you get 15 minutes to vent, and I don't want to hear that shit after this. <laughs> but you can pull out a notepad at some point and be like, oh, this is this is Erica. Yeah. Well, Erica, on May 17th, that one? Like, yeah, this <laughs> Erica? Like, <laughs> the one that was bugging, she didn't want to take out the trash? Yeah. yeah, I remember her. I remember her. You still got that problem? Now, I, I love the relationship that Diana and I have had because um, we had an opportunity to grow from being children to now adults. I, I'm not even gonna say young adults anymore, but like full blown adults. Like we literally give each other a round of applause when we got like when she got like matching like underwear and a bra on. Like like oh you're adulting <laughs> or or when I remember to put my laundry like in the basket or something. She's like oh my god, I'm so proud of you. Like yeah, your boy's you here. Big, big <laughs> Yo, it's serious because it's just like a lot of these things are underrated. 
Like a lot of these things are underrated, and a lot of these things we didn't do as kids. Like I, I used to make a plenty of messes. Like I complain about my kids, and I used to make plenty of messes. I was the king of fucking shit up. I break oh, shit. Man. Yeah, I yeah. To, I broke people's couches. I mean, yeah. I, I think I did. Yeah. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, remember, you jump on you them. Jump when you're on a kid. Them. <laughs> yeah, you jump on them. You were like, damn, like, now my mom got to pay for this. Like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. I think it was me and my sister. We broke like a shop owner's glass on his door one oh, time. Oh, shit. Because it was like, I think it was a it was a pull door, but the, the handle was too high. So we just tried to push, push it. Push that shit. Yeah. The snap and it just <laughs> broke the glass. <laughs> And we, were, we didn't even notice we did it, and then we just walked out and everything. And he came out yelling and stuff I, like that. I was pissed too. He put my damn door and his skirt off. <laughs> Our mom was so mad. She was like, "Why are you guys playing? We weren't even playing. Was like, we were just, just trying to get out. We were just trying to leave." <laughs> and but that was always like the thing too. When you're a kid, and I, I when I have kids, I got to remember like they're not always playing around. They might just be doing something, and you're just like, "Oh, okay." Like, but oh man, she always thought we were playing around, and we weren't. We broke some guy's door. Like, yeah, we. I'm gonna break stuff. Nah, I used to break people's shit while playing around. I'm trying oh, to wrestle. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to body stuff. WWE moves. I'm doing all of that. You know what yeah, I mean? I'm that. swan diving off shit. Putting people in sharpshooters. <laughs> <the power bomb. laughs> it was choking them out. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ch childhood is childhood was fun. Childhood was fun. Even even though like it wasn't always the most conducive. You cannot take away the fact that like. Like when I talk to kids today, I'm like, "Yo, you guys excited for school?" And they have the the natural answer, "No, I don't want to go back to school. You know, I can't stand school." But I sit there and I'm like, "When's the last time? This is gonna be the only time in your life where you get to go somewhere every single day and you see all your friends, yeah, all your friends every single day. Like you're expecting them to be there, and you guys are gonna have a fucking ball all day because that's your homie." I'm like, you know how how many times I get to see my friends in a month? <laughs> in a month, I'll be lucky if once. You know what I mean? We if we can coordinate all of it, like yo, enjoy it. And it's I be trying to get kids to realize that. And I, so you you reminded me of something that um I I heard when I was a kid, and I said it to my niece one time, and it was she was like so heartbroken, but so was I. Where I said, um, <laughs> <laughs> they're really your, both your yeah, afternoons. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I said it to her, and I, I probably shouldn't have, but it was funny. I said to her, um, there's gonna be a time. Where that's gonna be the last time your mom puts you down. Yes. Ah. Like, yeah, because she picked her up. And because she was like crying about something, but she's eight. And she, eight well, girls, she's eight now. Eight, eight she's girls eight are now. Big. Yeah, and she was like crying kids. about something. And I was like, there's gonna be a time where it's like the last time your mom puts you down. Like, you gotta stop crying about stuff. And she was like, she's not gonna pick me up anymore. <laughs> nah, and I was like, oh, <laughs> shit hurts. Like, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, there's gonna be. Like, my mom doesn't pick me up anymore, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, there's gonna be a time, and she was like, oh no, mom, why are you gonna stop picking me up? Because your ass gonna you know, get big. I was like, you're gonna be too big. I'm not gonna pick you up anymore. Yeah, you're not gonna want that shit either. <laughs> yeah. All, yeah, like that, that. That's also the other part of growing up is like certain things that you you value now. You you know, you're not gonna value them as much anymore. New mm -hmm. things are gonna take that place. I I I seen a post like that on Instagram. It was like. Um, if somebody would have told you that this was the last time and it was like of the Sandlot, it was like a, one of those, it was like, if somebody would have told you this was the last time you were going outside to play with your friends, you, you probably would have done it different or something along those lines. And it's like, damn, yo, there really was a last time where I was like, yo, I'll see you later. And we just never, never. played again, played yeah. again, like together. It's like, wow. When you think about that and, and it puts all that shit in perspective, like being 28 and it's like, wow, like. I had so many opportunities and I didn't realize like that these were the opportunities like to do certain things. You know what I mean? So I, so we're going to, we're going to leave that. I want to talk about now that you're a little bit older, um, a little bit more wiser. How do you, how do you like to spend your time now? Like, like what's, what's fun to you now? What's life like for you now? And I'm older. Um, no, that's a tough question. I mean, I still try to make time for everything. So oh, I go to work. You sound, you sound like you're stressing yeah. over there. <laughs> I, 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 I don't sleep as much as I that's, sleep. That's I'm exactly not even gonna what lie. I, all I said was like, this guy's stressing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't sleep as much as I should. Because, like, you got the school district that takes up a few hours every day. You got work, and then I try to make some time. Um, I mean, I guess the me time doesn't start till about like seven, eight o'clock at night. And I just. <sighs> 
Yeah, you gotta, but you gotta wait all day to get two yeah. hours to yourself. And then I wake up at seven, and then it's just like go from seven till about seven. So it's just, um, I mean, after that, like I just do whatever I can. It depends on how I want to unwind. Like I said, I'll try to get some video games in for like an hour or so, or I'll just go to a friend's place. So I have like a best friend who I still still talk to like every day, still chill with. That's fucking dope. Because yeah. I don't talk to my best friend every day. It's like, bro, I don't even want to talk to you every day. <laughs> no, like, I'll be honest. I love you, but... <laughs> it, it's It's just... I, like he's like my brother for me and you know i'll still talk to him we'll still chill or something like it's not every day but you know i could text him something or something like that mm -hmm. or i could just go over there or he could come over or something um but you know you tr try not every day is like that there's days i come home at like 10 especially there's a meeting like, that day I'm starts at like six yeah, yeah. I come home at like 10 nothing i'm just eating I, and going to bed yeah like i just want to i just want to wind down and just pass the fuck out i have days like that um, as far as that, I heard you mention the school board. So let people know what you do. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give you the floor. I, I really want to know why why you got into into the politics, the local politics seed. Um, what do you do on school board, and what the fuck school board does? Because there's gonna be people in here that have no clue what school board does, and I think people need to know the importance of school board and, and local government. So floor is yours. <laughs> well, so how I got involved in this yeah. was so this is dirty. Oh, it is. This is this is a <laughs> this this story. Like people don't believe me, but it's so I was coming home one night and it was like one a.m. and where I live, coming home one a.m. not the best thing to do. <laughs> but I'm and so I went to take out my trash uh -huh. and so and I remember this because it was. Night after rest, it was the WrestleMania night, Ooh. so it was super late. Ooh. So I was coming home, I took out my trash. Somebody stole my recycling bin. <laughs> so I have a recycling bin to use again six an hour. Somebody stole my recycling. I have a recycling bin to use. So I went. I still wanted to recycle, so I put the stuff in a bag and I was taking it down to a different recycling bin down the block. Okay. So because you know you have those recycling like vestibules big, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I'm taking it down the block. I come back up. And on my steps, there's these two girls. Mm -hmm. I don't know who they are. I will never know who they were. Um, and they're calling me like a name like Rick or something like that. They're like, you gonna let us in, Rick? And I'm like, who's Rick? What? And they're like, you gonna let us in? And like, we were going back and forth. And like, why are you acting like that? Why are you acting like you don't know us? Because I don't. I've never seen you before in my life. <laughs> so the one out of nowhere, she's just like, I'm tired of you. I'm gonna kick your ass. And I was just like, what is happening? She was about to get mobbed. Yeah. By two I was like, what? So I'm like, no, nah, I'm not dealing with this. And then the one literally starts kicking me. And I'm like, what in the world is happening? So I just like, yo, get off my steps. And I just push her off. And I'm like, I said, I'm not even dealing with this because I'm not I'm never gonna hit a woman. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna just call the cops. I phone is <laughs> inside. So I go inside, call the cops, and they start actually kicking my door while I'm inside. Oh shit. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, I'm, I called the cops, everything. And so the one, like before the cops get there, she literally kicks a hole in my door. Cause she kept kicking the same spot. I was about to say, she's strong as shit. Yeah, yeah. Her foot goes through my door and she gets like, so I open my door, I'm like, what are you doing? And then like, was she her, Was her in. leg still stuck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so she like goes in with the door and like falls in with the door and so she's like and then the one friend's like oh get up we gotta go i'm like you're not leaving now yeah. so i'm like you're gonna, you gonna, like, yeah, you gonna wait now <laughs> like you destroyed you could have left you could have left so long ago so i'm holding on to the one and then the cops come up and this is where it was like i'm black and i called the cops probably not the best thing because immediately i'm the aggressor in this situation uh... i called them and i told them there's two girls at my door they're kicking my door they attack me all that stuff so they show up and they tell me to get on the ground. They're like, you get on the ground now. I ain't even do nothing. And so I have, my mom is sick. She was on dialysis. Okay. So she's like, she's not really knowing what's going on. She's like, what's going on? What's happening? And they're like, you get on the ground now. My mom's like, just do it, just do it. And I'm like, yo, I called you. Like you guys are supposed to be helping me. I called y'all to the scene. Right. And they're like, get down now, <clears throat> stop talking. I'm, talk I'm, I'm the only guy here, a guy called you. So I'm like, all right, I get down. My neighbor comes out. He's like, yo, bro, just get on the floor. Just get down. 
And he's like, I think he's like my age. He's like, yo, just get down. So I'm like, all right, I get on the floor. And he's like, don't move, don't move. And those two girls are like, just, they're not even worried about them. And so he, they're talking to them. And I'm like, yo, what are you guys talking to them? And so the one guy's like, all right, you can get up now. And so like, they're talking to them. I'm like, why are you guys talking to them? I'm the one who called you. Right. And the one guy's like, if you want this to end well, you better shut your mouth. And I'm like, what does that mean? What do you mean end well? Like, what? So... And the one guy is like, whose house is this? I'm like, it's my house. I was like, all right, go I fucking house. called you. Yeah, I called you. Go, oh. go, go in the house. You're very, very so, patient, man. <laughs> so you are, bro. I, I go in the house. <laughs> they, and then the one guy comes in and he starts questioning me. And I'm, and while he's questioning me, they're letting the two go. I'm like, what are you guys doing? They put a hole in my door. Why are you letting them go? And the one guy, he looks at, so there's like five, six cops there. One cop looks at her. And I'm like, this is hers. He sees she has no shoe on because her shoe was on the other side of my door, too. He looks over. He's like, she did that? Like, yes. I've been trying to the tell you. without a shoe. You, you yes. fucking got me on the floor. And I so they pick her up. So the one guy, so the cop's like, hey, stop that one. Just that one. Stop that one. As soon as the one cop picks her up, she starts attacking. And on the report, she bit him. She punched him in the eye. All kinds of stuff. Like, it, She's it was gangster. Like, yeah. So she was attacking him. And I'm like, see, that's what I'm telling you about. Something's going on. Like, they weren't with it. And then the other cop is like, oh, okay, I see what you mean. This is what I was trying to tell you. Oh, and God. the other guy's asking me questions. He's like, hey, look at me. Look at me. Like, bro, I'm trying to explain what's going on. They're going through it now. He's like, look, if you don't start listening to me, this is not going to end well for you. Okay. Again, what does that mean? That's just, I've heard this twice now. All what the, does that mean? All, it only takes you at the maximum six months to become a police officer. Nearly any other profession, like nearly any other profession, especially one with that much responsibility, takes on average at least two years. And these motherfuckers just just walk in off the street and become police officers. Like that shit drives me nuts. And so like that's <laughs> happening. And I'm like, don't let the other one go. She was attacking me too. Don't let her go. They just let her walk off. Aww. So then I come outside. I'm explaining to the other officer. I'm talking to him. While I'm talking to him, the one girl that's sitting in the cop car, the other one that they let go, mm -hmm. she comes back up. Don't While they're, she, don't... all their backs are turned, she I... comes back up, opens the oh, door. Oh, she's gangsta. And pulls the other girl out. <laughs> And then I'm like, do you see this? <laughs> and they turn around and the one cop is like, you dumb. And it was like, we let you go. And they start chasing them down and they pick them up and they're both fighting them. Then they're like putting, you know, you put your feet up so you can't get in the door and yeah. all that. So they're trying to shove them in. And the one guy is like, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, we really see what I, you mean. I'm sorry. Yeah, like, yeah, please, I'm the one who called please, you. Please tell, I wanna, please tell me you did something about these dumb asses. So I talked to um, what's the, one of the assistant DAs. They were like, yeah, there's nothing you can really, because they didn't do anything to me. They might not, I, all I could do was file a complaint because they didn't do anything to me. They just weren't listening to me, Man, which isn't what, something What, what about your, like, your respect as a human being, bro? Like, you, you're going to keep, <laughs> like, passively, like, passive aggressively threatening me. That, you know that's what, I mean? what it was, like, yeah. like, what do you mean by this? You got me on the fucking floor, and I'm the person who called out two women. I'm the only one here with a, with a, fucking set of balls like come on bro nah, but they, they didn't, according to him they didn't do anything so there's nothing that i could do so like and then we go to court so you know you gotta go to court she put a hole in my door gotta go to court so <clears throat> i go to court and this is where i was like yo this whole thing has been messed up because and i was even talking to what was his name Al back chief out back or whatever it was he was like yeah you can follow a complaint but you know and even the da was like mm, they didn't assault you they didn't touch you they didn't, they didn't violate your rights at any point, so you can't really do anything. So I go to court, and the one girl, she comes out, and she's looking around. She didn't recognize me. She had no idea who I was. And because my mom is there, and she had just gotten done with her session again. Mm -hmm. So she's like, is that the girl? Is that the girl? She, she didn't know what the girl looked like. And I was like, no, it's that one right there. And she comes out. She's looking around. She's like, I don't know who it even was. So the judge talks to her, and he's like, you know what happened did they say you did and she was like i don't even know what happened i she said i have been in rehab multiple times i was just getting clean and then my friend gave me some stuff i didn't even know she did it oh, so and then the judge was like <clears throat> well did you willingly take it she was like she put in my drink i guess so did you take the drink yeah well then anything you do after that is kind of on yours 
And she was, and I was like, yo, that's bad. But then it got to where he was like, well, what do you want to happen to it? I was like, I just wanted to pay for my door. And she needs rehab. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, she needs rehab. So put her in rehab or something like that. And he was like, well, this is, I think it was like, it was her second offense or something like that. And he was like, no, I'm going to put her in jail. And I was like, that's not I'm the hell this happened yeah. to. She, uh, Why'd you ask what I wanted to happen if you if were just going to throw her in jail? Yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't hate her or anything like that. I just wanted to pay for my door. I knew she was on something. They mm. did, like, a toxicology. She was on, like, cocaine or and crack mixed or something like that. And I was like, but I don't feel like she needs to go to jail for that. Like, I, I, I think I that's the wrong that. mindset. We, we constantly do that to people, like, people that need, like, mental health services or drug services. We're putting them in prison with yeah. with people who actually deserve to be there. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, we, we lock people up for fucking parking tickets. It's just like... And that, and for me, I was like, all right, I something's clearly wrong here. From the way I was treated by the police to the way that she got locked up when, all right, she did assault me, but at the end of the day, I don't want her to go to jail for assaulting me. Right. And I'm the one who got assaulted. So right. I'm like, all right, let her pay for my door. That's it. And so even then, I was like, all right, I need to at least try to run for something, try to fix this system because something's broken here where we're just using the county jail as a way to just put people away. That she wash, can't pay wash, for my door while she's in jail. Yeah. And you can get drugs in jail. Let's be honest here. That doesn't fix it. Like, her asking for rehab is her saying, I want to do some kind of drug and alcohol prevention to stop this from happening. I know I was hanging out with the wrong person. And she's willing to change who she hangs out with. She's like, I'm not talking to her anymore. Yeah, you drug me, motherfucker. Yeah, like, cool. She was drugged. Like, and okay, she took the drink and she knew there was something in the drink, but she didn't know what it was. She didn't know she was gonna black out right. and attack somebody. And it's like, we need to at least give her some kind of assistance that she needs. And so I was like, all right, I gotta see how the government works. I gotta see how the system works so I can go ahead and work towards changing part of the system because what we're doing now isn't ever going to work. Like you you, you can't just keep locking people away and assume the problem's gonna go away or else it would've been fixed a long time, long time ago. We have the highest incarceration rate out of nearly any country in the world. And I mean, you you see in some parts of the world, it's just like, this is a fucking shithole. For this to be America, this is a shithole. And it, it's amazing because if you look at a country that has a lower incarceration rate, you're basically in a hotel room. Uh, people I, I see like back. that, like in Switzerland and shit. Yeah, but they're not going back. Because it's rehabilitation. They, yes, you're not just putting someone in a cage and just walking away. You're putting someone in there who's going to become a better member of society because they learned how to under your care, right. under your watch. You taught them to be a better person instead of here's your three, here's your three meals, go back to yourself. Here's yeah. your three meals, go back to yourself. They're not learning anything. They're not well, becoming better. One hour. I, I had somebody on here. The episode didn't drop yet. Uh, shout out to Lathia Marquise, but he was up here. He's a um, he was a convicted felon. He did like a, a decent amount of time in prison, and he was telling me about the last time he got out. Um, when he got moved from, he did like his first four years in a maximum, uh, actually Greaterford. I'm not sure if you know anything about Greaterford, um, but it's probably one of the worst prisons around here. And um, he's like, bro, the amount, he's like, it's my, it's basically being out in the street and <coughs> stuck in, in some walls. He's like, you know, you can get drugs in there, whatever, whatever you want in there, knives, you can get in there. And uh, he's like, he's like, you know, I, I realized that. And he was like, unless I'm willing to die in here, I'm gonna have to change. And ultimately he got out, like he got better behavior and he went to a lower max. And he was like, in there, he's like, there's really where I got an opportunity to feel like I can actually do something different. He's like, you know, I was there. I got enrolled in all the programs that they offered, uh, like carpentry. He started like ripping off shit. Um, uh, he got really heavy into reading and shit. He's like, he's like, it's a small library. He's like, I read, he's like, I read damn near every book. I forget what the subject was on, but he's like, I read every book in that, in that subject. And I was like, you know, that's impressive. But I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, if you try to get to the root of the issue, what's going on with these people and how they even ended up here, and then you pour into that, like, of how we can not fix them, but improve, then I really think we can get some better people when they come out of jail for however long they've been in there. But I, like you said, we're kind of just throwing these people in the cages, giving them an hour of exercise and... and 30 minutes to eat. Sometimes they even got to eat in their cells, which is something yeah. that I learned. Like, you know what I mean? He told me he was put in the hole and you get one phone call a week. Like, can you imagine? Like, it's hard to go a couple days without talking to your mom now. 
and because just regular life imagine only being able to get one phone call you got to choose between your mom and your daughter you know what i mean like things like that it's like that should have driven a man crazy that should drive any person in, a person crazy and that's what we do to people and i don't and I, I i want us to be able to say hey we need to do a change here we need to make some kind of change where we can actually do something to help rehabilitate because we end up spending so much less money Fuck yeah. At the end of the day, if you're not going back, then there's no prison that's needed to house all of these people. So we're spending less money. And that's part of the reason why I'm like, all right, if anything, we need to do something about the school to prison pipeline. So that's why that's even a, that's a great place to start. Yeah, even for <clears throat> years I've been talking to our school districts, our school board. Like me and Linda Vega used to go back and forth all the time. Shout out to Linda Vega. <laughs> Big shout out to Linda Vega. And it's something where even now, um, in in our new policies that we're taking in that we're implementing i've had conversations with how do we get away from suspending our students how do we get away from just taking them sending them out of school and putting them on the streets for three four five to ten days there's nothing that they're learning out there there's nothing but idle hands are the devil's work you're you're you have to give them something you have to give them something else so we're looking into all right how do we do like community service how do we have them working with nonprofits? How do we have them doing entrepreneurship? So instead of me just, you know, you did something wrong and you're getting suspended. What am I doing as a result of that? They haven't learned anything. Yeah. What's to stop them from doing it again? Because a lot of people look at that, a lot of <laughs> students look at that as, I'm just taking a day off from school. I get, I get a little bit of a break in the middle of the week. Yeah, yeah. but now it's going to be, okay, you know, what is it that we can do to help you outside of here? In child care, we call that redirection. Like, yeah, it's that's... like two kids getting into a fight and instead of just taking the toy, you know what I mean? You explain to them, like, we can share this, you know, you can ask, can you use this and then go play with something else so they're done, you know what I mean? But like, just taking all the options away, it, it makes them go find a new toy. And guess what? We're going to fight about this one now. Yeah, it you know, it's, it's essentially the same thing. It doesn't stop the fight. It just prolongs it. Prolongs, it just yeah. extends it to something else. Yeah. And that's where I want to say, hey, so, you know, we have someone, we have Steve. Steve has been suspended twice. Well, why has he been suspended twice? What's going on? Oh, he's going through this, this, and this. Hey, Steve, instead of us, you know, you can't, we have to follow some kind of rule. How about we have you go to a soup kitchen? How about we have you work with a local nonprofit? Hey, Steve actually enjoyed that. Now he's volunteering. So instead of him having nothing to do when he gets home, he goes over there. Steve now knows he can do this. And now he's talking to people. Now he's expanding. Now he's educating himself or the nonprofits helping him get through life and now all of a sudden you just changed steve from a kid who's been getting suspended every single week to now he enjoys going over there and helping and doing these things giving back or even like someone who's let's just say they're in a cosmetology class let's just say you know they've gotten in trouble but you know they they grades might not be their thing but they want to be able to run their own Thought there was abuse going on at home you know what i mean it wasn't abuse to me but she deemed it abuse and my mom lost her shit you telling people my business yada 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 <laughs> you know they're gonna take your ass and all that shit but it was like you know i probably didn't tell the right person for it you know and and she was just thinking this is one way because you know her job is my teacher her job isn't to help me through my issues but had I known we had a guidance counselor there, I would have been more willing to go down there and talk to her because this is something that she might actually be able to help me with. So, you know, there's a, I think there's a lot of different ways that we can help these kids that we don't help these kids. Uh, do you find the work that you get to do on school board fulfilling? I do. I do, because it's one thing to, I guess, and I don't want to take anything away from the activism part, but it's one thing to be say we need to make a change we need to make a change than to actually have an idea of what a change will look like mm -hmm. so to be able to sit and work together towards let's do this let's do this why can't we do this and it allows me the freedom to at any time i can call our superintendent at any time i can call our cfo at any time i could call anybody and just all right well, what are we doing here why how are we making a change like so I, I find that very fulfilling because there has been change made on suggestions that I've come up with or things that I've done where it's like, all right, at least I know that from the back end of things, I've made some kind of effect. Contribution, change. yeah. And so even to your wife's point, 
we are trying to do something where we're hiring more therapists, we're hiring psychiatrists, we're hiring people. So you can come and talk to someone. I mean, it's unfortunate what happened to you, but a teacher is a mandated reporter. Yeah. So if she thinks something's wrong, wrong. she has yeah, to report she has it. To, yeah. But we're also hiring people who come from a background like ours where you can say, hey, you know, I went home and, you know, for us getting hit is nothing new. Yeah. I don't, we should be honest. For us getting black, hit is Black nothing, people but, whoop ass. Yeah. Like, but, I, I don't know how to say. But <laughs> somebody else who's never been through that might think you're getting abused where it's like, no, I just meant like she just pop me in the back of the head like yeah. that kind of thing so we have someone who we can have people that students can talk to where that's their actual a culture person. a cultural understanding as well yeah. where, so yeah. we just even in trexler like we just approved i think it was 22 or 13 one of those two i don't know why both of those are in my head it was one of those numbers of therapists that the students they'll be for the entire school year like this is your therapist like you can come and talk to this person that's and that's that's, that's beautiful yours. so you don't, and one of the things I'm sure you even understand is a kid doesn't want to then, okay, well, I was just talking to Mrs. Jones, and now all of a sudden, where's Mrs. Jones? Like, now I'm talking to somebody else, but no, now you've got Mrs. Jones, for, you just got Mrs. Jones, so yeah. she knows you, There's and you know her. There's consistency, and we can build and together. that's what we're building, yeah. is that consistency, so we can have someone that you can go and talk to about your problems, you can go and talk to about your issues. Mm -hmm. And we have so many support systems now where we're trying to make it so, because at the end of the day, like we're trying to do a weekend. The school district is not a fix all problem, but people have so many problems outside of the home mm -hmm. where we're trying to help with that. So if you are having problems with like, you need somewhere to sleep at night, the school district can have, we have like a homeless liaison who can try to help you. Yeah. We have these therapists that you can come talk to. We have people now that you can come talk to, we can try to help you, we can try to give you this assistance. I mean, what, it's like half of our schools at night turn into food banks at this point. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, like a lot of our schools turn into like food banks where, you know, uh, one of the things is like Central Elementary, mm -hmm. there'd be a line around the corner a lot of times where people just come and get some food because that's what we're doing now. Oh, that's where, dope, I didn't know about this. And this, this, is, this is what drives me crazy, like, I can get on the morning call and I'll read crashes, murders, <laughs> um, fucking the electric has been out for three days, um, Dorney Park is getting a new ride, but nothing like that. So when people sit here and they're like, oh, nobody does anything to help anybody, like there's real work being done and it's yeah. not being and it's not being noticed and it's not being talked about. You know what I mean? I think that's also a huge problem because if I didn't talk to you, I, nine times out of ten, I wouldn't have known. Yeah, it's, we're doing what we can to try to help make things better. And it's, but that's why I say like the school district is not, and it was never intended to be a solve all of the problem. Right. But we're trying to solve all of the problems that we can because we understand like everyone's lives have changed, especially when COVID post, happened. Yeah, post COVID. And we need to do what we can to the best of our abilities where it's like, yeah, there's obviously lines we can't cross. But we want to at least get to right at the yeah, edge of that we, line. We want to push the envelope here. where it's like, yeah, we can help you. And so we can at least point you towards where you can get more help. Because there's services that the county needs to be the ones who issue out. Mm -hmm. There's services that the city needs to be the ones to issue out. But we can at least, like, providing therapists. The, the bridge to, yeah, to all like, of that. Technically, that's like the county is the ones who are supposed to be. But no, we're here doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, we're here helping. Like, this is not a you know, the rest of your life kind of therapy session, but it's someone that the students can come and talk to. It's an actual licensed psychiatrist that they can come and talk to or a licensed therapist or a social worker that they can have a conversation I, with. I think that's extremely important, man, because as a kid, there were so many times I was left to figure out what the hell I did wrong. And you know what I mean? And the way that it made me feel, it was it was non-existent. It was it like, you know, to, to the outside, it was non-existent. There was you know, figure it out, you know, and then, and then there's always like that stigma we have is like black cultures, like, you know what I mean? We, we don't cry, we're, we're men, you know what I mean? So there's like, there's a whole bunch of like, not only systemic hurdles, but cultural hurdles that we're all getting over. So I think it's really dope that you guys are realizing like, all right, we can't do all of these things, but we can help here, here, and here. And that's the way we have it. And this is a way that we can support people now. I think that's really awesome. And I appreciate the fact that somebody like you is up there you know what I mean? Because I'll be 100% honest. It, it brings a little bit of um, comfort knowing that there's somebody who understands me and what like my upbringing was like, what my kids, uh, what my kids' upbringing is going to be like somewhat. 
and you can advocate for those things because you understand those things. I don't expect somebody who never grown up in my area, didn't come from a socioeconomic class like I have to understand what it is to be like me. You know what I mean? So I think that's a, a representation is, I think is, is another big part of it. So I do want to, I want to say thank you for going oh, out there and taking <laughs> it. Not, nah, I do owe you a thank you because even though like it, it seems ins insignificant, I have two children that go through the Allentown school district. You know what I mean? And I feel a little bit better knowing that night that my children have somebody, at least even if it's just one, one person that's up there that gives a shit about the well being the well being because for a long time it, it's very easy to go through the school system it feels like nobody really gives a fuck. Like you know what I mean? So, We've had teachers that be like, hey, just show up, let me know you're in school and you can go do whatever you want for the next 45 minutes. Like we've had that, you know? Um, teachers, you walk in a class and the moment they the moment you walk in, they kick you right back out because it's just like I don't want to deal with you today. And you know, it, it, it brings a lot of comfort knowing that there is somebody that understands and, and at least is, is trying. Well, they're trying, we'll say that. So even something as simple as what you just said, where it's like you walk in and you get kicked back out. Like now we get numbers on that. So we get numbers on how is a student being suspended and what is the race of the student that's being suspended and what was happening. So they used to always keep track of that, but we as a board weren't always getting that. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, so if you suspended this student, what did you suspend that student for? And if this kid didn't get it for the same exact thing, well, why? Why? Yeah, where, where's the where's the yeah. fairness in this? Yeah, what yeah. happened here? So, yeah, he could have been a problem every other day, but now we're getting to, you're suspending him, so now he's, now he's just a problem outside of here. Yeah. So, but he hasn't learned anything. Like, he's not gained anything from this because... Obviously, it might not be something where he enjoys school. Right. And there's students that don't. But we don't want to take away the rest of their life because they didn't enjoy these this. 12 years of their life. Yeah. So we want to give you something to build on because school, we've always been preaching college and career ready. But I feel like we still were only doing the college ready part. Mm -hmm. I want these students to be career ready because and career doesn't mean you have to go and work for somebody. You can have your own career working for yourself. And that's where I think it was lost over these last few years, where we have so many different places that I've talked to the unions around here and they're like, yeah, nobody ever answers us mm -hmm. in the ASD. Nobody ever answers us and works it. Like we had, um, and we're getting our programs going in Allen and Deer Oof, and we're even getting them started in the middle schools where it was, we have all these unions around and they're willing to pay for the materials. They're willing to pay Go for to the schools. Tools. Yeah. They're willing to pay for the school. They're willing to let us use their buildings. There's, that's because there's a shortage of like, like, like people that can yeah. work with their hands, carpentry, plumbing, uh, electrical. And these are things that we just never push. Like you said, we're, how we're many, pushing the college. Yeah. But how many people where you finish school and you go to college and then at the end of the day, they don't you're even still work. a carpenter. Yeah. Like, so it's like, they don't Why didn't we just help him become a carpenter while he was in school, save him the ridiculous college debt, Right, and then he's already a productive member of society who's helping out in this city, so, hey, in case I need anything, I actually have someone from ASD I can call. Right. Like, this is where we're creating this ridiculous amount of debt for our students when we don't need, need to. Need to. Let, let these, these kids will tell you what they want and what they need. These kids, that's what, like, I got a three-year-old son that will tell you exactly what he needs and nothing more. And sometimes he don't even need me. Sometimes he just needs me to get out of his way so that way he can do what he needs. Earlier today, this is going to be the last thing, before you got here, you, the trash can, my phone's sitting on a trash can. Everybody got a banana. All the kids are tall enough to reach on the counter, grab a banana. He didn't need my help. He moved my phone onto the floor, climbed on the trash can, grabbed his own damn banana. Sometimes we just need to get out of their way and let them do what they need to do and just help them if they need help. I helped them down. He needed help getting down. That's all. That's all I did for him. You know, and, and I think we have this complex where it feels like we need to tell them what they need to do to be successful. And like, they'll figure it out. Just as we figured out whatever people didn't tell us, they will figure it out. They just need support. That's, that's all we need to do is just be that helping hand. So one thing that I, I will say that is, 
there used to be a time where yes, we would have to have needed to tell them what to do, but mm-hmm. it's not in twenty twenty three. It's not like it's that. It's not anymore. like that. Every single person at any point can just Google it. Yep, they can watch a YouTube video. They can Google it. So at this point, yes, we just got to give you the tools to succeed. You can go out there and go ahead and succeed. Yep. We have eight year old entrepreneurs making millions of millions dollars out, now, make, mm-hmm. making bow ties, yeah. little bracelets. Like the, at this these... point, what tools do you need? I you might not need me at all, mm-hmm. but what tool do you need? How can in I order support you? Yep. How can I That's support it. you in this? And and just let them do what they do. And I think uh, I think if I think if more people in pa- in positions of power had that mindset, where it's like. Just let's stop thinking about the way we used to do things and let's see how the world has changed and how we can fit this way that we do things into this new way of living. And I think once we have those conversations, we get some people that have a little bit more cultural understanding, a little bit more societal understanding, a little less old, um, I think will make a, a, a lot of changes. And, and, that's, and that's why I'm like, I'm proud to have at least been here to do that because like, I don't know if you heard, even Central, like Central Elementary. Mm. So we also, we're working. at the hour, so. This is, oh, I told you, look at that. I can, I can, <laughs> it flies by, I told you. Do you want me to finish your? Uh, yeah, finish your story, okay. and then we're going to close up shop All here. Right. So Central Elementary, uh-huh. we're, we're actually working with the Da Vinci Center. So we're going to have, okay. like, a section of, so our Central Elementary students, we're starting in man, third grade. Mm-hmm. No, we're starting in second grade. They're going to use the Da Vinci Center as a campus. So they're going to be able to go back and forth between the Da Vinci Center. So they're not coming to us. Yeah. We're going over there where they have all this state-of-the-art technology. They have all this upgraded items, all kinds of stuff. Anything mm-hmm. you could think of, it's over there. I've never even been in there, but... Uh, they just built the new one, and it's going to start in March where they're going to go over there, and they're going to learn all kinds of stuff. You'd never be able to interaction inside their own classrooms over That's there. That's fire. And so, but we're giving them different tools than what we've ever had access to to help them <laughs> succeed. I, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was telling you earlier. Like, I, I, first off, I didn't know that until I got there that there was literally no limit to what we could do to help our students because you were always being told from the outside, no, nah, we can't our do hand, that. Our hands no, are No, we can't do that. Yeah. But then I get to the inside and it's like, well, why can't we? Well, I mean, no, I'm going to need you to tell me why we can't. I put it in an email and send it to me because if not, then we're doing it. Yeah. And it's completely different responses that you get to the point of where it's like, this is actual effective change. And we're doing so many different things now to make, and these students are going to have an amazing education and it's going to expand to all the different grades throughout the years. It's at least five years that we're doing. So we're going to encompass all the grades that are coming through central. And we're already like, he really wants to partner here to help our students become just amazing student because before years ago, ASD was one of the better, better school districts in the entire state and the country. We're getting back to that. We want to be able to expand ourselves because we were just wasting money and wasting time and just filling holes. We were we were taking out fires, but we were only getting there late. Like half the forest is already burned. Right now, it's like we're we're not even having fires anymore. Now we're looking towards all right. Now we've fixed all this. What are we doing to build here? What are we doing to make this better? And honestly, like kindergarten, we're gonna start seeing about next year, how we can bus our students again. We're gonna have that whole partnership going. And this whole thing is just gonna be an expansion. And it's gonna be, we're gonna try to get ourselves back on the map again towards this is how we're gonna do things better. And at the same time, do whatever we can to help our students outside of school, outside of the classroom, because it's 2023. Like, I, I, I'm not an educator. I'm not going to lie. I can't. It takes a but, village, though, <laughs> yeah. man. But at the end of the day, I know that there are lines that we can go right up next to. And we can go ahead and use that. And we can go ahead and use what I've learned through life, what the experiences I've gone through life, and what I know, because working with the actual students, I know they want this. I know they want to be able to succeed. And there's been so many students who have come back and said, man, this was this was great man you helped me man i couldn't believe it and adults too where it's like you're an adult and you're going through these programs and it's like i didn't know i could do this i didn't know i could do that like even and again i'll use linda vega she went through my inside allentown program and she was like oh my gosh like this is amazing genie went through you know that like, <laughs> yeah. went, like oh my gosh this is amazing so that's where it's like i i want to make sure like at the end of the day and this might sound selfish 
everything around me is great. No, nah, at the end of the day, everything as, around me as is as great. As you should. Why aim any and, lower? Why yeah, aim and, any lower? But that includes like everyone around me is great. Like, and, and so because there could be a day where I end up sick. Hey, who's my doctor gonna be? Well, this doctor came from ASD. He'd be like, all right, cool. Go ahead and operate because I can understand that we gave them a quality education and they went on to become a doctor. You know, I, I might need some kind of representation. Who's my lawyer? ASD lawyer. All right, go ahead. I'll take them. Like something like that. And right. that's why I do, because at the end of the day, everyone, you know, they're going to end up being our future because they literally are. Uh, yeah. And I want to make sure our future looks great. And at the end of the day, I don't have to worry about anything. I could be that old man telling stories. Yeah. From the corner, you know? <laughs> He's on the block on Yeah. 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 Old man telling stories I'm from the fuck corner. with it. <laughs> no, I, you, listen, that's why I said thank you because it, the ideas are there. The ideas are there. The ambition sounds like it's there. And and the want and the drive to actually accomplish these things, not just have ideas, but the want and drive to actually bring them to fruition is there. You know what I mean? You just saying, no, nah, write it in an email and you explain to me why we can't. And if we can't, then guess what? We're doing it. If you don't have a good enough, and like, you know, and it, and it can't only be about money. You know what I mean? There, there gotta be, everybody's giving away money. You know, St. Luke's keeps popping these buildings up everywhere. <laughs> if somebody got money for something, and if it's for the future, everybody should be willing to pay the tab, at least a portion of it. You know what I mean? We're, that, this is who we're leaving, this is who we're leaving everything to anyway. Let's, let's give it the best opportunity to thrive as we can. So, yeah, I like that, man. Thank you, I appreciate it. You know, and I would say I pay taxes too. I was hurt when the district tax increased, but last year, good management did what we were supposed to. No tax increase. So, and that's a two-year difference. That's mm -hmm. when I get there, we're raising taxes. We've been there. We've worked towards a goal. Now we're not raising. So there's like a difference once you start working towards the goal and you have the right people in place to do the right job. Right. Yeah, I like that. I, I'm really excited to see how how things put continue to progress i mean shit like i said uh before the camera turned on we were talking about my daughter got her first grade uh, supply list and there was nothing on there for school stuff it was only like cleaning and sanitary things and i asked you well my wife asked you and you're like yeah we're trying to supply all those things for the kids i'm like that's that's huge you know what i mean like even we walmart has this little thing on on their website it was like back to school you can click it you can click what's what district they go to and what grade they're in and it'll put together their entire supply list and you could just go pick it up i thought that was so dope but the supply list for both of my kids ended up coming out to 160 dollars and i'm sitting i'm like i mean i could pay 160 bucks but it's like damn 160 dollars you know what i'm saying and and the fact that we don't have to get a lot of these things. I'm like, well, look, if, if it's not on that list, we don't actually need it because they have notebooks, they have paper, glue sticks, all that stuff. And you guys didn't require that. And you're like, hey, you know, we're trying to get these things supplied because we understand that it's hard sometimes, you know? So even somebody who can afford it, I appreciate it because I know there's somebody out there that isn't, it is, isn't in the same position as me. And this is fucking God sent, you know what I'm saying? So. Thank you. Is there any last things you want to say to the people before we close up shop? Leave them with some last words. I guess I would say, I don't know, uh, just cliche, like never give up, keep trying. Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of no's. It's going to be a rocky road, but like, if you believe in what you're doing and you believe you can make a change, don't let anybody tell you no. Nope. Um, and until your heart stops beating, keep trying. That's why I tell our students all the time. Until your heart starts beating, keep trying, because you'll get there eventually. That's a fact. Find something. Find something that that sets your heart on fire, and chase it with a with a crazy man's pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a crazy man's pursuit. I know. I know you say you don't do do uh, social media, but for the people who, because I know there's gonna be people who obviously like listen to this and would want to either spread like words of encouragement towards you, or just talk about what you do for you know the school district and stuff what's the best way to get in contact with you if you don't mind sharing like yeah people who yeah how can people reach you how can people so I've, reach you? i've been trying to get back into social media I, I, I'll, I, I still have facebook like you can find me on there it's just my name patrick palmer um and i think my instagram is uh i think it's palmer for the people 
See, look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's Palmer for the people. Palmer for the people. Yeah. Into the back. Yeah, I definitely have that. So, yeah. so we'll make sure we'll make sure all of your uh, socials and ways to contact you are in the description uh, for those people who are forget while listening, whatever the case may be. But people will be able to reach you. Um, I hope I hope some people reach out and see how they can be a part of what you guys are building, sure. um, because I hear some real beautiful things that got a lot of potential to create a lot of good change. So I'm on board with all that shit. Um, but I want to thank you guys for listening, Patrick. I want to say thank you for coming up here, well, being a part okay, of what I'm trying to plug build. real quick for Tuesday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, everybody, come out out on Tuesday. Um, we're having a back to school bash. It's our first official one, but it's the first annual. Hey, so we're going to keep doing, doing this shit every year. It's going to be free supplies. Uh, there's cleaning products. There's um, feminine products. There's um, and there's going to be free food. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have and there's going to be food tasting. So we're changing up. I know we hear it all the time. We're changing up what we're feeding our students again. We're going back to the basics. Hey. We're going back to the home cooking, the scratch. I'm like, yo, we need those chicken turnovers again. You know, we're getting all that back in there. So they're going to have, like, food tasting for all that. And um, it's going to be, like, there's going to be dance shows from our students and all that. And uh, I'm emceeing the thing. So you're going to see me out there. Um, it starts at 1. It's on Tuesday. We're taking Cedar Beach, and we're using the, um, the J. Bernie Crumb, too. Ooh. So, yeah, we're all over the place. Sounds like a big thing. For, yeah. for you guys who, who don't live in Allentown and don't know nothing about where he's talking about, this is a huge fucking space. Could fit thousands and thousands of people. So, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Sorry. Come oh. out and come fill up the space. There's plenty of it. Yeah, take all of our stuff. Uh, yeah. It's all free. I, I don't want anything left. <laughs> so, I need enough people to show up to make sure we are cleaned out. All please right. If, show up. If you, have any, if you have any flyers or anything like that, please post them um, so I can get them out onto the social media today so people know um, that this is to come. Because this takes a couple days to get together. And yeah, I can, edit I can make something like a little bit small. We'll put yeah. it out as well. And we'll put no, it out so that we people this, know. It's this Tuesday coming up. Yeah. So, in two days. Days. All right. Um, but thank you guys for listening. Thank you again for being a part of this, bro. I, you know, I'm greatly appreciative. Thank you for the work that you're putting in on behalf of the community and the kids. Um, and yeah, man, shoot for the moon. If you miss, you're still amongst the stars. Peace. Uh, drove on the road that normal people don't take. Full of surprises, there may be no escape. I'm not afraid of the challenges. Just check all the calluses. That's from pulling and grappling. Gotta eat up and scavenge it. I can never starve. I'm nothing like you. There's way too much money to be made for me despite you. I hope all of my brothers doing good and make the right moves. You chasing dreams, I'm trying to close the distance like a fight move. The media despise you I learned that people fuck with you based on convenience when you no longer accommodate to their wishes